What I'm doing is uh, I'm getting ready to send off my Welcome Back Cotter DVD Season 1 box set. You know, while most of the guys my age remember him for the Sweat Hogs, I always uh, kind of remembered the show for Judy Borden. Uh, Helene Limbeck uh, played Judy Borden in this series. and. I want to make sure, uh, you know, I make an impression. I think that's it. Mom always said that you never get a second chance to make a first impression, and that's what I'm trying to do here. Wow, whoa, what's up? You came to my door. I understand that, but you're looking at me as you've never looked at me before like that, ever. That was scary. That was seriously scary. What do you need? Derek would like to know if he can start painting the Daytona. The one he should have painted last week. The answer is yes, he can. Tom was very unhappy when he was here a week ago that it wasn't painted, so I think certainly now a week late would definitely be a good time. And before you go back, Warno, take that to the post office for me. Mail it. Thank you. Helene Lembeck. Strange. Hey, was you wondering what I was doing, man? I just got that box set sent off to Helene Limbeck. Yeah, she's gonna be pretty excited, I think. This time on Graveyard Cars. So I decided to come out to see how the car was. If Tom wants it done any faster, Tom can help. So Mark changed the locks on you and he did not give you a new key. I decided we'd start doing some work on the Cook's Barracuda convertible. You stop running your mouth and grab that hood. Better watch it, Chrome Dome. So the new Bad Boy Blaster that Mark delivered to us, this thing is huge. This could put your lights out. <laughs> I was really nervous to ask Mark. You're not fired. That's good. It should be my purple car sitting here instead of this heap. Push me today. You're going to meet your maker. Got that car coming to get you, Barbara. The unburied dead. My name is Mark Warman. I work with my worst enemy, Darren Kirkpatrick. Give me a gun! And my son-in-law, Josh. Whoa! Along with my best friend, Royal. Well, all right! And our newest team member, Holly. This is exciting. We bring dead cars back to life. If we don't kill each other. Oh, Mark. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. Oh. It was really nice having Tom come out. He flew 3,000 miles to check up on his car, but I looked at it as he flew 3,000 miles to get insulted. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to use some of my new bulb material on him. So I decided to come out and surprise Mark and the guys to see how the car was. Totally didn't expect a client to fly 3,000 miles just to check up on his car, but it was actually nice to see him. I was hoping it would be painted by now, and I uh, was surprised that it wasn't, and I asked him, you know, what can we do to get it done? And he told me, after he got done insulting my bald head, if Tom wants it done any faster, Tom can help. So the first thing he had me do was take the front end apart, which he didn't let me finish because all of a sudden I hear, swim cap. Then he pulls me off and he gives me a broom. I start sweeping and I hear, moon head. So then I get working in the trunk, and I hear these murmurs of some other kind of lovely names that he decided to call me. Uncle Fester, Milky! Yo, Yule Brenner! I'm asked, do I come up with names on my own? Do I think of certain uh, things, or I just lay awake to think of No, the names that I have, they come to me really naturally. Sinead O'Connor, Marblehead! I've been told I got a very quick mind, very fertile mind. I really wanted to spend a couple of minutes uh, with Cue Ball to let him know that the uh, brackets that he sent out uh, by Rick Fairless are just amazing compared to the original one. We talk all the time about uh, vendors and that we can't do a great job if they don't do a great job. And that, that's an example of it. When we put that nose cone on there now, there won't be any hogging out holes. There won't be any modifications. The nose will go on. It'll line up with the fenders and the hood, and it'll fit the way it's supposed to, probably better than it did from the factory. Rick Fairless sent these, right? Right. Rick, Rick Fairless used to own this car, actually, also. That's what you were telling me yeah, earlier. he had a multitude of uh, wing cars, so then he went into reproducing 
the brackets, which are impossible. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you sent these honestly because, like I said, when I made the phone call, we've got the the ones that came with the car. Right. I didn't know if you ever saw them, but oh, yeah. we've got them yeah. mocked up here into place, and uh, you can just tell by looking at it. Like the first thing I noticed, and I remember reading online is that little indentation that kind of looks like a, I don't know. The popsicle yeah, stick Yeah, like indent. a popsicle. Yeah, that's the, like, I don't see them right here. I don't see that popstick indentation. The uh, the holes, there are no holes there at all. Right, these have the or holes those here. those have the holes over there. Then these here, the side uh, anchoring brackets for all the bucket uh, systems, these all had to be hogged out. Look at how we had to hog the hole to get them to fit. Like this one up here, right. and this right. way one way up here. These are all perfect. These are exactly where they belong. Everything you see is a pierced hole. It's perfect. It's right where it's supposed to be on pattern. The Z shape is right. The popsicle's right. All those are right. It's just like, please tell Rick thank you for sending those out because that's going to make everything fit. And right. if it goes to a show, and I know you want to do some show stuff this summer, right? Um, that there, I, if I was a Superbird guy, I would just start looking for things like that right off the bat. So, mm -hmm. so that's a good thing. Yep. Yep. I wanted to talk with Tom about exactly what was underneath the nose cone in the way of structure, inner structure, wiring, and brackets. So, you know, the last thing I want to point out here is uh, we've got everything mocked up on that. We've already fit all the headlight mm -hmm. doors. One of the things you were asking me, and, and I didn't know all the answers till we got this one apart, right. is what actually goes in there. That's kind of a mystery. What all goes in this huge, big nose cone besides headlights? This is not a safe car. <laughs> if you look here, you have these two huge Z brackets. Basically, that and this upper latch tray right. are what keep that nose cone from sliding all the way through the core support, firewall, and into the steering wheel. It, so today they got, what, 10 mile an hour right. crash bumpers or right. 15 mile an hour? No collapsible This bumper. is zero. I, I saw a video the other day, a guy was talking about the salesman back in the day. The nose stuck out so darn far on these cars that when the salesman would go to park them on the car lots, they'd bump into something and just waste the brand new right. steel front end on it. Yep. So, yep. so there's your safety absorption right there. <laughs> nice. So. After chipping my tooth on the first day, having a week of insults, and working on my own car, I think I'm ready to go home. It was great having Tom out to visit. Uh, he actually is a really hard worker and he helps out a lot. I know he was disappointed that his car hadn't gotten painted by the time he got here. So I'm gonna move some things around in the queue and see if we can start blowing some red on it by the end of the week. In 1967, Plymouth introduced the GTX, the very first luxury muscle car. What platform was it built on? A, the Plymouth Satellite, B, the Plymouth Roadrunner, or C, the Plymouth Belvedere? Stay tuned for the answer. So what car was it that Plymouth chose to build the GTX on? Well, in 1967, Chrysler wanted to build a luxurious muscle car. They chose the Plymouth Belvedere. Reason being, it was the entry-level car for Plymouth it had no stripes, no badges, no ornamentation. They could start with a clean palette and build out the GTX however they wanted. The GTX was optioned with a 440 or a 426 Hemi in 1967, and today is one of the most collectible cars on the planet. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. So I managed to get the DVD box set sent off to Helene Limbach. Mark Kane had called me and told me that he has a surprise coming out. It was great seeing Tom Partridge. He was looking forward to having his car painted, and unfortunately it was not. Got to get color on this car now. Well, Mark's been pushing real hard to get the Daytona done. Time to rock and roll and make her all red and get her put together and down the road. When you've used a paint system as long as I've used PPG, you learn what works and what doesn't, or what the very best way to make something work is. So in the case of our Daytona Charger, it's R4 Red factory paint code. That means it's a solid color, no metallics. If you remember back to our Challenger sunroof car, FC7, it actually had metallic in it. Metallic paint has to be spread out evenly. It has to be shot at a certain pressure. You have to make certain drop passes. You have to do cross patterns to make sure that you don't have a splotchiness of metallic. If you did that with a single stage, it would look terrible. In the case of our R4 Daytona Charger, R4 is a solid red color. It doesn't have metallic in it. I learned years ago that the concept single stage, it wet sands and buffs better than the clear coat. It has a richer, deeper look to it, and as well as it saves a bunch of money because you don't have the base coat and the clear coat together. You just have one product, a single stage paint. So you save time and money, and in the end, the result is even better. I just know that the finished product is a lot better and a lot shinier if you use the single stage concept.
What's up, Holly? What are you doing? Hey. Uh, just working in here. Yeah, you look a little overwhelmed, I must say. I am overwhelmed. I uh, thought that I would be in my office today, but the locks were changed. So Mark changed the locks on you, and he did not give you a new key. That's right. And there was a note on the door under construction. It's nice of him to let you know. I know, right? <laughs> so I take it you're just going to be here for temporarily studying, eh? It's a little overwhelmed. Looks like you got all the numbers and stuff laid out. Uh, yeah, it's it's just like hunting down all these different codes. I feel really bad for Holly. Her job is actually pretty hard. I mean, especially since she is new to all the cars. You know, the best way that I've started to learn the numbers is not actually by reading the books. It's actually being out there working on the cars, believe it or not. As crazy as it sounds, you know, especially with Mark counting me nonstop, you've got to know this stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go back to it. So if you All need right. anything, you just let me know. All right. Thanks, Josh. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. I love that we're busy at Graveyard Cars, but unfortunately, it's getting to be like Grand Central Station. People coming and going constantly. It's always cool to see your old friends, especially from season one, season two, like Mark Kane. But the best part of it was this amazing Media Blaster he brought us. This thing is huge, it's fantastic. Three filters, there's just nothing better. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing my friend. I just love it more when they bring gifts. So you're gonna have to show me one of the new ones because they're getting used to the Nova King. <laughs> Dude, beautiful. Red. It's huge. Red. Me too. Give me That's taller than you, Lurch. Anything's taller than you. That's a great this, comeback. You should put little, that down that's with. That's a great. Maybe you should just. You maybe you should put that along with. You are, and I know you are, but what am I? Those are some brilliant comebacks. Mark, in talking to me, what he was looking for in a blast cabinet, described to me the size and parts he would be putting in the machine, and I figured our Bata series would probably be the best fit for him. That's our new welded cabinet, and we build that in a suction as well as pressure feed and uh, it's perfect fit for what he's doing. The new one is amazing, it's, it's huge, uh, but not only that, it has the pressure tanks on one end, has the siphon ability, so it's gonna be able to allow us to speed up even more of our process. He basically has a special custom-built cabinet. There's none like it in the US. It's our design, and it was built for him. Very proud of our cabinets. Um, these are fully state-of-the-art. Um, they've got the integrated built-in vacuum which nobody in the industry does. Now, Mark, what we did on this with the mint size of this cabinet, we had to add more vacuum to it, more area. So now we've got the doors that open hinged, and then these are the dust bags. Boy, what a nice unit, huh? Yep. So now you. So got, these we just take out and maintain every week. Well, like what you, you do, there's about. a ring at the bottom. You don't have to take them out. You just hold this and shake it, and then your dust gets collected here. You dump it out, dump that dust out, gotcha. and you go right back to work. Got it. Uh, they've got the self-filtering floor. Most use a reclaiming unit. Very expensive, very high maintenance. With these, there's basically cleaning the dust bags. That's all there is to running the machine. Hole diameter is 0.180, and it allows only the media to go through. You will get some paint chips, but they're small enough that it doesn't affect the performance of the cabinet. I mean, you're so, not going to drop nuts and bolts right. and stuff like that. Any, but anything else, when you get done at the end of the day, you can take a shot back and just shot back whatever you've blown off, like the paint dust. The new blast cabinet is gonna allow us to be able to do larger items like doors, fenders, and hoods. That's gonna mean that we can keep everything here at Graveyard Cars. That means we can do things faster and up the quality even one more notch. The integrated pressure system is unique. A lot of your body parts that you do on a car, you need very low pressure so you don't get warpage, and that's what this machine does. Another neat feature about this, when you push that foot control, this pressure coming out of here is only like one PSI. That way if somebody, for whatever reason had this door open and then went over there and hit that, it's not gonna immediately put somebody's eye on. Oh. It's gonna give you, it'll be so low pressure, it'll give you a warning, hey, this thing's on. Okay. It's just a brand new design we've come up with. Wow. It's totally safe. With the multi-V designs in the base of the machine, you don't have all that problem with the media getting down to the pickup tube. It's always waiting on you. And the lighting is so far away from your workstation that you don't have any problem with your lights getting distorted by the abrasive. Well, they're bright, too. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So that's a unique feature. It's just another bad boy feature that really makes it convenient. My favorite part of having Mark come out with some new equipment is my opportunity to kind of release that inner uh, boxer in me. I think Mark, for his age, is, is fairly strong. I think his strength only lasts for a short period of time, you know, and then he would just 
absolutely nothing. It's you know, the average heavyweight hits at 300 pounds per square inch. I'd hit at 700. You know what that means? Anything you're, you're I lying? hit, it destroys. <laughs> Bust you up. Talk to Mark Cain about busting people up. Bust you up. He, do, he does this every time you come that's around. What, that's, what, that's what Mr. T, that's what Mr. It, T said to Rocky. Be... To Darren, it's a game. He has no idea. I have the ability to terminate his existence, cancel his contract, you know what I'm saying? Finish him. This can put your lights out in a heartbeat. No, it can. <laughs> Get him. How would you defend it? Don't, don't hit me, because you know I've got osteoporosis. Well, because... I had somebody tell me once I should have been a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> so the new Bad Boy Blaster that Mark delivered to us, I know I'm gonna be spending a lot of time on it. This thing is huge. I don't know where the hell Mark's gonna put it at. We have so much stuff here in the shop. I mean, things are just escalating quickly. I don't know where we're gonna put it. Novocaine! I thought you left, dude. Well, I've got a present for you out here. So I'll put it in your mouth and grab that hood. Better watch it, Chrome Dome. Grab Balance it. the back. I was really nervous. You're not fired. That's good. Derek sprayed the paint on Tom's Daytona, only a week late. Holly's been displaced while her office is mysteriously under construction. And my good friend Mark Kane came to visit and brought us a custom-built blasting cabinet that's big enough to put a hood in. Now high five his face. Who does she look like? <laughs> I, I think she her. looks like me. Really? Oh, my baby doesn't look anything like baby. you. She's she looks a, like me. She's got, don't say no, she looks like this. a prune. She looks like a prune with a beard. You know what, long term? I don't want any crap out of you. What? Oh, wow. How are you? I thought you left, dude. Well, I've got a present for you out here. Got you an early present. Saw you guys running around the shop here cleaning parts, and I got you something now that's mobile. I thought Mark already left. I had no idea. Next thing you know, he comes back in the office. He's got another present for us. It's a solvent tank. Works off of air, not electricity. Christmas part two, apparently. Now, see, the air pressure brings out the solvent. Now, we've designed this with a long bristle so you can get down into stuff like carburetors. That is a cool unit. Then so you just shut the air off. Mm -hmm. Then you can open the valve that go back into the mm -hmm. tank. So it's the ultimate recycler. Right, it's just recycling. Yeah. If you're working on anything, and a lot of the stuff we completely disassemble, but if you wanted to do the rear brakes on one of these cars, you could just roll this underneath it, wash out all that old dust, have the tank right there to do it with, and then you're, uh, you're back on the road again. I think the Bad Boy solvent tank is just another great addition to our arsenal of equipment already at Graveyard Cars. Uh, it works off of air, it doesn't need the electricity, so that makes me mobile anywhere in the shop. It's a nice little unit. That's, uh, that's brand new. You that's designed a, that? Yep, that's a brand new. That wow. is really Bad Boy cool. Blaster's design. Love having Mark Kane out, he's a great guy, always shows me a couple of new moves for the boxing. Uh, I think more importantly, and to the point, he always hooks us up with the best equipment that's available in his industry. It's good to good to see you, my friend. Hi. Tell the family hi for us. My hair may be getting thin, but have you looked at yours? Yeah. I got a piece I of might. advice for and you. Don't ever shave your head. You're going to look like Jupiter from the Hills Have Eyes. Well, that would be you. You are. Good comeback, Royal. Quick. All right, let's get this thing apart. Right now, the Daytona Charger is in the paint booth getting its final paint. Uh, since we don't have all the parts for the Sunroof Challenger, I decided we'd start doing some work on the Cook's Barracuda convertible. You want this car done? You want the, R the you purple know we car can't done? Do the RP. I'm missing some parts. It's not my fault. We've had this conversation. We can have it again, Rain Man. You know, as usual, things don't always go as, as to plan here at Graveyard Cars. We're going to work on this purple sunroof Challenger, but the parts didn't show up, so Mark has to come out and work on this green Barracuda. And as soon as we get the hood up, we want to put the bolts right back in it. Cool. I know you guys yeah, want to put them in a wrist side. rocket and shoot them across the street, so I have to just spin the <laughs> next yeah, six months be good. Get... Better anybody. watch it, Chrome Dome. Yeah, the bickering's getting to be too much. You know, it's, it's, I'm wanting to get this done, get everything dropped out so we can start taking them apart. No, it goes so everybody. much quicker if you stop running your mouth and grab that hood. There you okay. go. Ooh, don't pull it over that way. Well, I was hoping to get to take the car apart with just maybe Josh and Darren and keep Mark out of it, but that didn't work. The fact is we still have a deadline on that car along with all the others. We need to get it disassembled up to the dipper, back, and start doing body and paint on it. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the smartest one of all? Darren. Oh, sorry. Go ahead and drain the antifreeze out. So I'm trying to see the fluids drain, get something done. I know how Mark is about getting fluid on the floor. He just has a fit. So what I want to do is I want to measure the exact location of the ethylene glycol warning label. This was one of the things that people put on so they could put it on anywhere on this upper tie bar. And I could put it on anywhere on the upper tie bar when we're done, but mm -hmm. I want it to be exactly the way it started its life 40 years ago. That means you see how it's hanging over the edge that way? Right. 
and it's centered. I've got them out back that most of them are way over here, but this particular one is almost centered and over that way. I want to duplicate that when we go back together again. Okay. We're actually having a really good time disassembling this car. I'm learning a lot of things, a lot of history about this car, and Mark's doing a really good job on teaching me. Josh is evolving a lot as a restoration technician. I think part of that is because he's now starting to understand why I have such a passion for these cars and for the era that they came from. I think he is evolving into something that we're gonna be able to really uh, mold and grow in the future. So if you can measure from the edge of that, right there to the center of that hole, and tell me, and then hold it there. Got it? For me, one of my favorite things is documenting exactly where labels and decals and different things went. The books say that you had a certain footprint to put them in. I want to duplicate originally how it was done. I want to relive history. <laughs> That's how long are you going to milk that for, Mary? I I'd like to get this engine transmission saying, out. I know, man. I just don't know why this thing doesn't Just stand in there. Make sure it's clear to come out. I am. Everything is pretty clear to come out. Really? So this vacuum hose isn't hooked up? Nope. That one might be. I'm asking you to do that. Every day I wake up, I find a new reason to hate Darren. Today it's the funny gloves. What is with the funny gloves? You will never see me wear those. Sometimes you may notice I wear gloves. They may be white, blue, yellow, green, or pink. I actually consider myself to be a doctor, you know, a car doctor. I actually think I was supposed to be a brain doctor in real life. What? Nothing. While the endangered feces and I are working on the 70 Barracuda convertible for the cooks, I had Larry from Larry's Interiors come out and start working on the vinyl top for the Sunroof Challenger. Again, I cannot emphasize, pick good vendors. Make sure they have the passion and the quality that you have, and it'll show in the finished product. Back in the day, one of the first things a guy did when he got his new 440 Magnum was take the exhaust manifolds off and replace it with an aftermarket header. Believing that the aftermarket headers would increase the horsepower and the output of the engine, the factory HP exhaust manifolds ended up in the garbage. True or false, the aftermarket header would increase the horsepower and output of the engine over the factory HP exhaust manifolds. The answer coming up after the break. So did the aftermarket header increase the performance over a factory HP exhaust manifold? In years since, many tests have been done comparing the flow of the HP exhaust manifold to the aftermarket header. And it turns out, the factory HP exhaust manifold flowed every bit as good as an aftermarket replacement header. Therefore, the answer is false. And the downside to that, all those manifolds that got thrown away and hauled off for scrap have driven today's prices up, and you can spend as much as $500 for the correct manifolds for your 440. Visit GraveyardCars.com to learn more. Right after bringing us a custom-built blasting cabinet, Mark Kane surprised us with a brand new bad boy parts washer. We got rocking on the teardown for the Cook 70 Barracuda convertible, and Larry from Larry's Interiors finished the vinyl top on our 70 Sunroof Challenger. Now that we have everything disconnected from the top side of the car, we can roll the car back on the bend pack, lift it up, and disassemble the engine, pull it down, get everything else going. Okay, get the three quarter inch wrench, which is right behind you, and drop that upper one up. Stop right there. You wanna get the tires off? Um, yeah. Once I've established that I have all the photos that I need for the restoration, it's time to disassemble the car. In the case of our Barracuda, the first thing we do is disconnect everything on the top, all of the things that are attached to it, including the exhaust, the transmission, and the drive shaft. That allows us to be able to unbolt the K-member upper control arms and the rest of the suspension pieces and drop that unit out as a whole, just like we put it in as a whole. Oh, balance the back. Remember, these things like to shoot. Just like when you're putting one of these cars together, you have to take your time and be patient and careful. You have to do the same thing when you're disassembling them. When you disconnect that son of a bitch, sometimes they're back heavy, depending how they're put on, and they can drop right off the back. Put that right underneath the eight and three quarter. When you're taking that front suspension out, you're not just taking the suspension out. The motor, the transmission, and that front cam member make up one third of the weight of the car. So when you take it out and you drop it and release it from the rest of the body, you're gonna have a real good chance of it flipping over backwards. That's why I always put a brace in the back, some kind of a jack support to keep the car from tipping over. We 
After that, we can remove the rear suspension, which is a series of unbolting the shackles, the front leaf spring mounts, disconnecting the shocks and the brake lines to it, and then lower the car down so the axle can actually set on its suspension and raise the car up away from it. At that point, you've got the entire underside done. Now you can move it to a dolly and disassemble the top side. We're a pretty close-knit group of guys, and I'm feeling more comfortable all the time about letting my body guys help me out with disassembly. Now that we actually have the Barracuda's front and rear suspension out, we can roll it over to the body shop. They're going to disassemble it, tag and bag everything, and then we can get it moved off to the Media Blaster and get it stripped. The Barracuda didn't just start out one day with that name on it and be hatched. That car evolved. That car evolved from the 1964 and a half introduction of it, which is just a weird looking little car. It was kind of looked like a Valiant, had a huge back window on it. It wasn't a good looking car. It was one of Royal's favorites. Royal had one when we were kids. Uh, that was the first generation of the Barracuda. That was 1964 and a half all the way through 1967. In 1967, 68, and 69, it took on still an A-body platform, but it was sleeker, it was more refined. You can begin to see the influence that's in the 70 E-body in that late 69 body style. So it was really fun to watch that particular car evolve from the 64 and a half to the 70, which the 70 and 71 are the pinnacle years for the Barracuda, the most sought after cars, the sexiest cars. And uh, it just shows that you start out with what you have and you just keep dialing it in, dialing it in, dialing it in. One day you've just got a masterpiece and that's what I think the 70 Barracuda is. <laughs> hey Ollie. How's it going? You don't get the reference? Ellis from Die Hard, the original one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter, yeah. Hey. Brought you some more homework. Thing. Mark came in and threw this gigantic book on the table and was like, here you go. And it will probably be really helpful, but it's just like one more book that I have to like kind of dig into. What can I do for you? Okay, so first off, I have a question about my office. You're Take locked out. In. I'm locked out. Yeah. Saw the sign. I didn't yeah. hey. know what was You're going on. You're not fired. That's good. No, I'm doing some construction. I meant to tell you, I meant to tell everybody, but it's kind of on, it's under wraps. So right now I'm not really sharing what I'm doing over there, but I am doing a lot of work. This would be a good office for you for right now. But you're gonna like it when it's done. Kind of stocking the place up. <laughs> it does. Is there a time frame or? Um, no, I've lost 10 pounds in a week. 10 pounds in a week and I'm not even sick. So. Just been walking, hiking. I went on a four mile run. I didn't run all of it. I ran like two tenths of it, but the rest of it was a really fast pace. So. Um. Took up another notch in my belt, so. <laughs> Dude. Well, I was wondering if. By the way, I've studied every one of these manuals front to back. I'm sorry. <laughs> help you out here a little bit. If you if you don't believe me, you might take a look on the inside. I believe you'll see my name in the special thanks graveyard card. Really? Well, I appreciate your interest and admire your enthusiasm. I think I can handle things just fine on my own. Name of the movie? A Few Good Men, Tom Cruise. <sighs> so what's your question? Well, I was wondering if it might be a possibility that I help you work on the cars. You wanna get your hands dirty a little bit? Yeah. Well, I will say this, I'd like a little bit of time to think about something like that, because it's obviously it's not what you were hired for. I was really nervous to ask Mark about working on the cars, because I wasn't quite sure what he would say. I don't hate the idea. You do learn, a normal person with a normal brain and, and, a, and an IQ above room temperature would gain a lot of knowledge by working on the cars. So I'm not saying I hate it, and I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, but I will think about it. Okay. He said he'd think about it. That cool? That's awesome. So, you're doing a great job. Hey, was you guys wondering what impression I was just doing in there? I was doing Ellis from Die Hard when he walks up to Holly. I said, hey, Holly. <laughs> but what about you, you pig eared dolphin? Your face got more lines on it than a road map. Your eyeballs are heading on the side of your head like a parrot. Push me today, and you're going to meet your maker. It should be my purple car sitting here instead of this heap. Kick your kidneys. He needs help. Go for it. Who writes that? The team knocked out the teardown on the Cook's Barracuda convertible in record time. Then, Holly threw me a curveball when she asked if she could work on cars. And I still haven't got anything back from Helene Limbeck 
in regards to my Welcome Back Cotter DVD set. We've got a nice early start today at Graveyard Cars. Today we're putting on some of the trim and ornamentation for the sunroof car. That's fun stuff, that's payoff stuff. I should be excited about it, but I'm not, because it should be my purple car sitting here instead of this heap. We got the carpet laid in so it can lay. It's got to lay there for a few days. So what I want to do is I'm going to run out in the graveyard and get the exact measurements of where the Challenger emblems go because there's no predetermined holes and I can't trust the influshables to put them on because they'll be upside down and at the front of the fender. The emblems were put on a specific spot, but the only way to find out where the emblems go exactly is to measure a original car. It looked like the factory put them on an inch and a half above the style line. So I'm going to put two pieces of three quarter tape up there only because I didn't happen to have any inch and a half handy. <laughs> And that's going to give me my straight line, and it's going to give it an, an inch and a half off the style line. We just got the exterior handles for the Challenger sunroof car in, uh, along with the vinyl top molding clips. So I'm going to have Darren start putting those pieces on the car, and Josh and I are going to start assembling the 440 for it. I sent the 440 out to the machine shop to have it completely rebuilt. Uh, the guys always do a great job, but in this case, they thought they were gonna do me a favor, do me a solid, and put the motor together. This is what I had for cylinder head bolts. This is the original Highland bolt. This is the correct bolt, the correct length, the correct head, the correct markings. You can't take a car like this to a car show and expect to place with Allen headed bolts or hex headed bolts in it. You have to have all the original hardware. So that's what I've got Josh doing today is we tore the motor back down and we're putting the correct bolts and the correct hardware back in it so we can get it painted and over on the engine stand. Mr. Mopar's just started carrying these. They've got so much now. Good. I got like three people to call. Remember I used to call 50,000 people trying to get everything? I got three people to call. Nice. But that's gonna be pretty. Rake them over the valve. Okay. That forces them to rock into position. Now see, now the timing cover has the correct bolts, the correct length, the correct finish, and the correct head on them. In the late 60s through the early 70s, Chrysler offered a sunroof option in several of their muscle cars. One of the most sure ways to tell if a car has started life with a factory power sunroof or a manual one would be to look at the broadcast sheet. This information that called out the power sunroof, M51 in the case of our 70 Challenger, did not appear on the fender tag. You must have the broadcast sheet. If you do not have the broadcast sheet, you're going to have to learn how these sunroofs were installed. They were plucked off the assembly line, sent over to a company called American Sunroof Company, and the conversion was done there. While Chrysler took a lot of pride putting their cars together, I would have to say the American Sunroof Company did not exercise the same mentality of quality first. To show the crudeness that happened at American Sunroof Company, look here at these homemade little crude brackets. They use a self-tapping screw to hold it to the actual roof fixture. Then it extends over to the bracket, which is spot welded actually onto the mechanism itself. Instead of having nice formed pieces or making the provisions inside here that would look nicer, they just kind of scab this into place. You'll also notice that there are drain tubes. These are factory drain tubes that go down the A pillar and back down the B pillars and exit out through the wheelhouse in the rear and the side pillars in the front. When it came time to making holes for these drain tubes to go out, instead of drilling it, they just took a coal chisel and a punch and they punched these holes out, ran it down through the A pillar and then punched a hole in the cowl side panel. Here you can see that it was punched from the inside out to make the provision for the hole itself. That hole has been made absolutely with a coal chisel and probably maybe a punch. They didn't drill it, they just beat the crap out of it until it punched a hole big enough to accept that hose. Absolutely unheard of. If somebody did that here, I would kick their teeth down their throat, yard them out their rectum, and I wouldn't even violate their civil rights. Having the sunroof installed in one of these cars was a very unique process, and it's not gonna be easy to duplicate. Check the broadcast sheet, check the hardware, but remember, if you see a Power Sunroof 70 Challenger at your local car show, it's one of only 82 ever made. It probably is worth looking closer.
Now that I have the engine completely assembled and ready for paint, I can move it out to the booth, mix up some Hemi Orange in the cup, and start spraying. Why is the Daytona still in the booth? Derek I told me, it. no, Derek told me not to do anything with it until it's done curing. <sighs> painted. Okay, here's the problem. I need to paint the 440, just like I did an hour ago when I mentioned it. Yeah. I still need to paint it. So okay. if I can't get, is you tell me he won't leave take the it, booth. Just take it up with Derek, man. I don't know. I'm just doing what I, what Derek told me. You. I'm picking it up with you. I'm asking you. Is it not going to come out of there now? Derek painted it. Yes or no? Is it coming out? No, of it's not. Okay. Clean up the shop crane area, close all the curtains, open up the door so I can have a side draft through here, and don't go in the in the middle of the corner and make popcorn or something. Okay? <laughs> Just do what I asked you to do, and we'll get the engine painted. I can put it Where together. Where are you going? I'm going up to get the engine to push it out here and paint it. What part of all this did you miss? Hi, I'm 30 seconds ago. Did we get a chance to meet? Right now, things are going amazingly well at Graveyard Cars. Our Daytona Charger is painted. That's a huge step. We're doing lots of little things on the Sunroof Challenger, moving it towards the finish line. All these little baby steps add up to one giant step. You need them all. I look at these Mine's pictures of the muscle there. car. There's no pictures of yours in here. Why? Working hard. On there. I'm on a break. Oh, we're looking at pictures. Yeah. Why? This mail today? Yep, there's the mail. He just dropped it off. It's been three days. We're in Oregon. They're in California. What? How could it possibly take that long? How long does it take to get a letter from L.A.? Three how days. How long does it take? Did Usually you send three it? days for a letter. Did you send it it's been a, a couple, long time ago. You said ago. like three or four days ago. That and you're expecting it there and back and already she answered it? just it? doesn't take that long to send a letter, okay? This is that L.A. thing. They don't, they don't work on the same clock. Their clocks are like dog ear clocks. Every minute's like seven minutes. Darren and Royal, great guys, common guys. I can talk with them all day long, but they're not at the celebrity hood. They're not up here. They're not up here looking down on the others like, like us celebrities do. You know, I don't have to return phone calls, you know, now. Just waiting for Elaine to send back the DVDs. Well, she just barely I'm got hungry. it if she got it. What? I see she just barely got it if she got it at all. Maybe well, she could send it back and have a courtesy of return it right away. It's important to her. Let's go eat. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Looks like you haven't missed, like have missed any meals already to me. I'm ordering parts Push for it. My... Push it today. Push me at lunch today, you scarecrow. You're going to meet your maker. I used to just jump out of the back seat of these cars. Got the Daytona in. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Close the door, fool. Wow. Joy, they didn't take all the dents out of it, but it looks good. We get back from lunch. Josh has the Daytona Charger moved around to the showroom floor, wiped down and set in place. It's absolutely stunning. Look at the divots in the deck lid, though. This is what I was telling you earlier. Look, we, we brag about making it perfect, but in some things, you want to know that they're an original Daytona deck lid like this one. I could not be happier with the body and the paint on the Daytona Charger. It's flat. It glows like an amazing jewel. It looks beautiful on the showroom floor. The character lines that need to be there, such as the divots in the deck lid, they're there. The way the nose cone fits the fenders like original, that's there. Everything that makes this car a real Daytona, which it is, we have mimicked from the beginning to now. Is this a clone? Absolutely not. It's a real XX29 car. Okay. Always got to find the worst case scenario and everything. Huh? There isn't a worst case scenario. He just has to say something that makes him feel better about being an absolute significant loser that he is. Tom will be very happy when he gets here. He's going to love it. Did you practice falling down? Yeah, you better run. Mm. You want some of this calm down? Go for it. Go for it. I don't know. I don't know. Rocky three. Rocky to Mr. T. Mr. T says, Mr. T says, Mr. T looks at me and says, bless you up. And Rocky says, go for it. I said, don't you watch any movies? My point is, is, is you can work on the car. You can go for it. 
Okay. Great. Awesome. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. See you next week. Got it. Two days ago, no thanks to you. Right there, look, read. <laughs> what are you doing, camera boy? What you gonna do? You want some mother? <laughs> what is it? Hang on, it's my DVD, man. Read it. <laughs> Welcome I ain't back, gonna Cotter. get nothing done until Number he gets one, us out of his system. First season. What's it say? Welcome back, Cotter. The complete no, first season. No, not that fool <laughs> down there. <laughs> All my love. <laughs> All my love. Helene yeah, Who writes Jack, that? Judy Borden. Okay. Everybody to would their Would you have fans. ever thought the little kid from 14th Street would be getting a letter from somebody like that? That's cute, man. Yeah. I'm really happy read for it. you. I did read it. Just say it one time. We're not all excited, as excited as you are about it, doesn't seem like. Mm. Okay, they're all, they're all indigent. They, they can't read, apparently. No, we're happy for you. We are. Dear Mark, thank you for being Please such... Please take one pill twice daily. If you don't <laughs> symptoms are gone. shut your pie hole, <laughs> I'm going to kick your kidneys inside of your actual liver. Who's gonna help? This is why you need the pills. Thank you for being <laughs> such a long time fan of mine and the show. You know, she didn't have to do something like this. Just don't ever contaminate, don't def defile any of my treasures. Hey, was you wondering what I was just now opening up from the mailman? He needs, my he needs help. My Helene Limbeck DVD. I think overall we had a pretty good week. I think things went well. Uh, Tom got to leave disappointed, which I know makes you happy. And along the lines of disappointment, Holly was disappointed, which I know makes you extremely happy. Why wouldn't Ricky fit the door? Ricky wouldn't fit the door for the same reason nobody skis fit the door at the studio, okay? Why? I'm making changes over there that's nobody's business. So what is okay. going on? Speaking of changes, Holly is gonna start doing some work on cars, that's good. I bet she is as good mechanically at working on cars as she is at the research. So she's you not gonna why? be very good? The 440 got the correct bolts put in it. It got painted and is now ready to install in our Sunroof Challenger, which Larry got the vinyl top on. Mark Kane came out and brought us the Taj Mahal of Media Blasters and a parts washer. What happened to his finger? He ripped it off, okay? Ow. Same thing I'm gonna do to your head when I take a dooski in it. The Cook's Barracuda got disassembled and sent off to the Media Blaster. It's a Barracuda. That's great, that's why I said Barracuda. The Daytona got painted and it's absolutely stunning. It's about time it got painted. And the best news of all, the coup d'etat. The part that I will remember the most cherished when I'm a literal dude Lunch. sitting on it was finally getting my DVD box set back from Helene Limbeck. It doesn't just say, Dear Mark, thanks for watching, Helene. It says, Dear Mark, you're super funny. Your show's great. I wish you all the best. Love, Helene. And then this supplemental page, okay? But isn't that what you told her to say? No. You sent her a video. Hi, Helene, Mark Warman, uh, Graveyard Cards, probably recognize me. Uh, I wanted to <clears throat> put you a couple ideas for the signature on the box set that I'm sending you. Uh, dear Mark, um, I wish I could have worked with you instead of John Travolta back in the 70s. Dear Mark, love watching your show, uh, true genius comedy. Uh, you make me want to be a better person. Love, Helene, you know, something like that. Use your own words. <laughs> you know, not licensed comedian, I could be. That was a joke. The only thing that was a that joke was, was a... that shirt that was two sizes too small you wore. You ever seen Gilligan's Island? <laughs>